I reviewed the Sienna this past winter and temperature. Well, when I mean winter, Florida, it means it's perfect weather. I didn't have to run the AC. I was driving it mainly around town, driving my kids to school, to events, that sort of thing. I saw 47 miles per gallon. and I verified that with the pump. Now the Toyota Sienna, I've been asking for some updates for a while. It should have got a refresh a year or two ago. And at least we're finally getting some updates now for 2025. I will also talk about how I've been wanting for a plug-in version of this. I don't think we're getting it for 2025. I haven't read this press release, but if you're excited for the 2025 Toyota Sienna, smash that like button and let me know down below what you want to see on Toyota's you know, family extraordinaire. All right, Toyota Sienna adds new seat reminder tech and interior updates for 2025. We have an advanced rear seat reminder making its global debut on the Sienna. I guess we can cover this at the end. Uh, well, I guess I'll cover it right now quickly. Toyota will guarantee this for 10 years. Essentially, you have this millimeter wave radar that turns on after the driver leaves. So if your boneheaded self of a parent leaves your kid in the car, the Toyota, Toyota will start making or uh, honking noises in the Sienna, beeping noises, and then they can call 911 if it gets really bad. Unfortunately, it's just for the second and third row. So if you leave a kid sleeping in the front row, I mean, that'd be pretty bad if you don't see them as you leave the car. I mean, that's pretty funny, but is it really? Maybe not. And it doesn't include if you leave a living creature in the cargo area because the millimeter wave radar in theory wouldn't be able to penetrate to the cargo area. All right, but what sick parent can afford a $50,000 minivan that would also put their kids in the cargo area? I guess it, I, it would always surprise me. This is the first vehicle in Toyota's global lineup that will have this sort of safety feature built in. Um, so there you have it. All right, that's covered. We have a new vacuum and fridge box. That sounds handy. Can we read more about that? That is standard, of course, on the like the top grade which the platinums i don't know what is a platinum up to up, up 55 60 thousand dollars nowadays it's available unlimited good luck getting it in an xle maybe maybe you could buy it like from the dealer as a part and then you could install it hmm, makes me wonder i bet i bet it i bet you could anyways um up updated interior fit and finish on seats, console, dashboard for all grades. Uh, latest Toyota Auto multimedia system, it was still on the ancient software and it has, uh, well, okay, well, th the new software is standard, but the big screen is not. It should be standard. They shouldn't, they shouldn't be giving you guys a seven inch screen or whatever the base inch screen is gonna be and then give you a 12, 12 inch screen. Should be standard, but that's how Toyota Lexus rolls. It's a bit frustrating. Digital gauge cluster now available on XSE, Woodland Edition, Limited, and Platinum. Okay, so that's the new 12-inch digital gauge cluster, which has its pros and cons. It's really hard to customize, and it's a bit wonky with the controls. I prefer the old 7-inch screen. It's a lot easier to work with. Um, hopefully you can still get that on, on the XSE, for example. Woodland Edition and Platinum Grade change up wheel styling. Okay, we have new wheels. These are definitely new wheels for 2025. And Magnetic Gray, ex exterior color new to Platinum Limited, XSE, XLE, and LE Grade. So that's just about all of them. I guess it doesn't include the Woodland Edition. Let's see what kind of images we have here. I mean, they, they said they updated the interior trim, like for around this area, for example, that looks kind of fancy. Can we view a bigger image? There we go. This looks fancier uh, right here. Do we have wood? It looks like it. It's not nearly as nice as something like the Alphard for other markets, but hey, I'll take what we can get. So let's keep looking through the images here. I mean, we got the Ottoman here on the platinum grade. Um, let's keep looking. Uh, here's a new 12 inch screen. I like the climate control. We have wood. Heck yeah, I like that feature. I kinda, I don't know if it's real wood, but it looks like uh, maple wood right here. And then you have the fully digital uh, instrument cluster behind the steering wheel. Finally, the Sienna is getting some nice updates. Now I haven't 
seen or read anything about Toyota Safety System 3.0 yet. We'll have to keep reading in the press release for that. Oh, here's that cool box. It fits four Pedialytes or Gatorades, it looks like. I like the USB-Cs in the back. We also have this vacuum button. Now, HDMI, of course, uh, it's the only way really to watch things on that screen in the back seat because there's no DVD player and there are no built-in apps, if I remember correctly. So that's kind of a bummer. But look at this. There's two different settings here for the cool box. Uh, that's pretty neat. Let's see here. Let's look at this vacuum action. Whoa. Okay. So it's built into the center armrest console area and it's not removable. Am I, am I seeing this right? It is not removable. That's how's it going to, this hose doesn't look long enough to get in the third row or the first row or the cargo area. Um, so unless, and I, it doesn't look like it's removable because you have the power outlet thing right here. All right. So that kind of strikes out the usability and flexibility of this vacuum. Um, just go buy yourself a cheap Amazon vacuum that you can take into your house. Even a little portable thing. That's what we do. Yeah. Don't worry about getting this. I mean, give me a reason why you would get this over something like a little modern day dust buster with a lithium ion battery. Now, maybe it's higher power. I get that, but yeah, it looks like it's very limited with its functionality. Here are the new wheels. I like how thick this sidewall is. That's going to make for a very cushy ride right here. This is on the platinum. Let's see here. That's about it for the picture. So let's get into more of the details here. See if we can dig up any juiciness. I forgot to mention that new millimeter wave passenger detection in the back seats are is uh, standard throughout the lineup. Okay, you can get it on the LE all the way up to the Platinum. Oh, for the Woodland Edition, which are very rare, I hardly ever see any Woodlands. Maybe they don't send them to Florida, but we have new exclusive all-weather floor and rear cargo mats um, that have a stamped pine tree silhouette pattern that will have your mind on roasted marshmallows in no time. I mean, that's cool. I like that unique feature that that Woodland gets. I'm all for all weather floor mats. So the customizable digital gauge cluster behind the steering wheel is on the XSE Woodland Edition limited and platinum grade. So the XLE will not get it, nor the LE it looks like. The Qi wireless phone smart char smartphone charger also gets an update with fifth generation tech that charges devices more quickly. It is standard on all grades. That's great to see it's standard on the new Camry. All Sienna grades also get updates that include dual microphones for increased call clarity, USB-C charging throughout the cabin with a USB-A port in the dash. I don't know where that USB-A port is and if it is only the only way to do wired, wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in a USB-A, I mean, it doesn't bother me that much, but when you're in USB-A, it doesn't charge your phone as fast typically as a USB-C. So I guess that's one downfall, but I can't find where that USB-A is. All right, so we saw what the wheels looked like on the platinum gray just a second ago. You also have new six spoke dark finished alloy wheels um, on the Woodland Edition. The XSE and Woodland Edition door handles, grill and side window trim now have darkened features for a sophisticated touch. I would say maybe a more adventurous touch. Maybe that's because, you know, sophisticated, I feel like would be limited or platinum grade and XSE and Woodland would be more capable, more outgoing. I don't know. I'm not writing these articles. I'm, gl I'm glad I don't have to write them. A magnetic gray metallic exterior choice is available. Ah, this is new. All Toyota hybrids are moving to this new Beyond Zero hybrid badge. So let's go ahead and look at that again. There was a zoom in on it just barely. Wow. Okay. So they zoom in on the platinum. This is all the images they give us, but they couldn't zoom in on the new HEV. So it looks like it says HEV with the Beyond Zero at the far corner. And then it also says all wheel drive. Okay. Um, man, it would have been nice if they zoomed in on that, but whatever. We all know what it looks like at this point on other Toyota models. Okay. We also have updated pricing, um, 39,185 before destination, right? Excluding D pH on the LE front wheel drive expected to start riding Toyota dealerships nationwide in the fall of 2024. Yeah. Uh, interjecting here, uh, in the editing process, I need to bring this up for you guys. So 39,185 
that's before destination. Um, check out what the 24 model starts at 37, 685. So let's get all the old calculadora out 39, 185 minus 37, 685, a straight increase of 1500 bucks, assuming destination didn't go up as well, which it could have. So the LE Sienna has um, increased 1500 bucks. You do get new, or should I say more standard features here and better software, things like that. But mm, yeah, that's a big price creep. I wonder what the price creeps per trim level are going to be. I don't have that information in this article other than just the starting MSRP. But 1500 bucks, man, Toyota's got a stranglehold on the market. Why are they increasing this much? Well, even my local Toyota dealer says like, they're just impossible to come by the new Siennas. Toyota's not making enough of them. Production volume is nowhere close to where the, the demand is, okay? In my opinion, with the Grand Highlander now out, or once it gets back off of Stops Hill after the airbag fix, anyways, with that vehicle available, why have the, the normal Highlander? How about you just double the output of the Sienna? You know, the, the, the more you output, the economies of scales are in your favor. So, I mean, the prices in theory could fall too. Availability would go way up. But since availability is kept low, unfortunately, the Sienna has such an advantage in the market right now that Toyota can do this and not blink an eye. Why do they have such an advantage? In my opinion, the Sienna, its ace up its sleeve is, is the fuel economy. It gets double the fuel economy of the Odyssey. Um, it's a better vehicle overall compared to the, you know, the Chrysler products. Um, and I haven't driven the Kia Carnival, but I know they don't produce those at high volume. So yes anyways we need more minivan competition on the market honda needs to come out with a hybrid glad the carnival just came out of the hybrid that's going to help out massively with um in theory the, the sienna kind of just being the bully in the market right now but i got to cut myself off and let's get back into the article with the now fifteen hundred dollar more expensive toyota sienna can't wait to to get in the family now keep in mind when i get it um for family testing that it'll probably be the platinum grade that's or the XSE. Those are the only two grades I've seen in the fleet. Hopefully it's a platinum because I want to see how functional that cool box and that um, vacuum situation is. All right. Yes, the base grades come with an eight inch touchscreen. XLE, XSE, Woodland, Limited, and platinum featured the expansive 12 inch screen. So only the base grade comes with the eight inch screen. I'm glad that the most popular grades, which are typically the XLE and XSE, I'm glad that those are getting the 12 inch screen. Oh my goodness. Um, check this out. Toyota didn't update the safety features in here that I can see. All 25 Sienna models come standard with second generation Toyota safety since 2.0. Everything else in Toyota's lineup that's coming out, and, or ugh, it feels like maybe not the, the Highlander, but the Grand Highlander has Toyota safety since 3.0, and it's made there in Indiana uh, where this Sienna is made. So it's just strange that you have a family vehicle and it doesn't seem to be the highest priority to include the latest generation of Toyota safety sense. However, if you leave your kid in the car, you will, it's going to be harder to leave your kid in the car uh, with the new Sienna. So there's that. Okay. So that's a feature that safety sense 3.0 does not have, but yeah, no safety sense 2.5, no 3.0. And there's even, um, at least, at least blind spot monitor with your cross traffic alert is standard on all Sienna models. So what, like is 3.0, that big of a deal in some instances, yes, you have better cruise control pacing. You have better lane tracing. You also have proactive driver assist, which I hate, but some moms and dads might want that, which it, it's almost like an autopilot on all the time. Interesting. I'll see you guys down below on the lack of updates on Toyota safety since 3.0 and sticking with 2.0. Sienna still kicking everyone's butt with optional all-wheel drive. That's nothing new here. The engine hasn't changed. 
Uh, we're still going to have around 245 horsepower here and 36, 37 miles per gallon. We would be here all day if I comforted, uh, you know, the equipment and the differences between every single trim level. Um, they have builders online to help you understand that better than what a press release is going to do. So it's good Toyota is giving the Sienna some updates like the updates on the a Honda Accord yesterday. Not all the up, we, we're not getting all the updates we would like. We're getting some of them. Okay. It's nice that we're getting, you know, no one left behind safety technology. Uh, we're, we're getting, you know, some cool party tricks with the vacuum and the cool box. We're getting um, the bigger screens in there and some nice wood adornments on the upper grades is, is, is definitely welcome. Reminds me of my old 2004 Sienna, the XLE limited model or whatever it was, which was the top of the grade back then that had wood in there. I really liked that. But for me, most importantly, when are we going to see a Sienna plug-in hybrid? I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more auto industry updates, more model year changeovers are happening. So we're going to get some other stuff. Honestly, um, it looks like we got a 25th uh, limited edition hybrid for the Highlander. This could be the last year of the Highlander. I don't think I'm going to make a video on it, um, but the Highlander, the volume keeps getting shrunk in favor of the Grand Highlander. Um, and they will be making a three row SUV BEV in, um, the Kentucky plant before we know it, which could be the Highlander battery electric vehicle or plug-in hybrid who knows. And typically when you see an anniversary edition like this, it's typically the last model year. I'm not saying it is for sure, but like to me, it's pointing that way that this is the last model year, you know, a number one retail mid-size SUV for eight years running. That's all changing because the volume on this has just been cut in half or less with the production of the Grand Highlander and things like that. So anyways, um, long live the Highlander. It might be on the chopping block in the next year or two, at least in this form with a combustion engine. Thank you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.